Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part four of my look at the new brushes and Robel 4. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and finish up the painting that we've been working on. And here I wanted to go ahead and see what would happen if I use the thick dry brush to add some snow, uh, the final highlight to the snow. And so what I wanted to do was get a lighter um, color. Now you won't, you don't want a pure white here, but sort of an off-white orange or off-white with a touch of cadmium yellow or cadmium orange if you're doing this traditionally and so that's the effect that I want to try to get here and I'm using the thick dry brush and um, what I'm trying to do is make little curved uh, look a look of little curved humps in the snow and so I went ahead and put the paint down first and then I'm going back and using the uh, blending brush to try to get the uh, look of little humps in the snow and you want to leave little pockets of light and dark in the snow here and that's what I'm doing I'm uh, going over it with my blending brush but I'm not killing all the dark that's underneath the top layer of the snow so you want to let that light blue snow shine through there and you don't want to totally um, cover it up with a lighter layer of paint there and so this is working out really well um, the blending brush is uh, letting some of the um, underpainting we would call it that's the first layers it show through underneath the light snow and I'm using sort of a round curved look because we want it to uh, let it show that there's lumps and things under the snow and and you know there's trees and vegetation and rocks and things like that so you want you don't want the snow to just look flat you want it to look um, curved and and look like there's a three-dimensional um, object underneath it and so here I'm just kind of giving a um, adding a little bit more of the highlight snow but again not killing all of the dark snow underneath and the uh, blending brush is working quite well and I'm using the uh, knife right here because I want kind of a, a flat look um, across the road you want to kind of keep the road uh, the strokes that you use to paint the road and this is traditional or digital you want those to look horizontal so that they don't look like your road is tilted or that it's um, slanted and and about to fall off of your painting you want to go ahead and keep it um, you want the lines to sort of mimic the horizon line there so you want to keep them straight and then here I just wanted to put in some ruts in the road like there's a, a car that's uh, gone over it and so it's broken out some of the ice and you want to go ahead and uh, put the lines in first and then again run across it with the horizontal uh, strokes there and you can either smudge this out if you're doing this uh, traditionally with acrylic smudge it out with a paper towel right quick or your brush and you just want to kind of get that fuzzy look of um, tire tracks in the snow and I'm just kind of going over the snow and sort of uh, smoothing it out just a little bit smoothing out the brush strokes and trying to get the look of of a, a real smooth uh, f smooth newly fallen snow there and I'm playing around with uh, all the different oil brushes and I, I really like the thick paint brushes um, that uh, are in this set and another thing that you can do in Rebel is you can take any brush and alter it and save it as a new brush. So you can actually make your own brushes in this program too. 
and so here I want to add the final highlight to the trees and I'm adding a really light um, off-white color probably a little bit of orange in it or a little bit of um, of yellow you just want kind of an off-white so that it's not totally um, white and looks too chalky and you want to go ahead and use the same zigzag stroke that you've been using on the trees but don't kill all the darker color underneath there so I'm just leaving uh, quite a bit of the darker color um, right there to show through and that that gives your your tree a three-dimensional look and then you'd go ahead and do that to these trees right here in the front as well just kind of do the same jagged zigzag stroke and don't make them a hard line you want broken up lines here just um, just like it, it looks in the picture up above in the reference the the snow is all broken up it's not in just one big clump or anything because otherwise then it won't show up on the tree if you just make it one big clump it won't look correct and so I want to go ahead and bring that all the way down into the snow at the foot of the tree add a little bit of that color around um, the trees there and go ahead and smudge it out and it doesn't matter if it doesn't match up exactly with the snow that's there you want to go ahead and just kind of add it a little bit lighter look or a little bit bluer look as the final highlight here and again don't cover up all the snow that's underneath it you want to go ahead and keep the the under painting peeping through the top layers and do that the same way here on the other side of the road here and just kind of smooth it out and uh, don't cover up all the under paintings on that side either and so you just kind of want to smooth the edges out a little add a little bit dot of dots of this color this lighter highlight in the road here so that it looks like the sunlight is sort of catching the the edges of the snow and just kind of uh, go ahead and pick and and choose the places that you want the highlights to uh, be in your in your final painting here and it's, this is just kind of a little simple um, snow painting just to see I just wanted to test out the brush strokes and just see um, what all I could do here with this program and I want to kind of add a little bit of some fog to the background here and uh, if you do this traditionally you would just take a real thin watery glaze of paint and run it over the back here and this is what I'm doing here using the airbrush um, function in Rebel 4 because I just want the back of the the trees in the back to look like they're in kind of a mist there a, a fog that there it's maybe it's fixing to snow again or something the clouds are going to move in and and snow again so I wanted kind of that foggy misty look and you can uh, fix your opacity there on the on that and the size of your brush and just run it over the background and you might want to do it on a separate layer just in case you mess up um, in the when you're doing this digitally that's the good part you can actually do a separate layer if you do this traditionally you just have to get it right when you do it so don't mess it up <laughs> and I usually take a paper towel and maybe smear it over the top of that glaze because that it might if it's too thick or something you can go ahead and take a paper towel and then here I wanted to add a few little twiggy bushes right there at the last not too dark because I don't want them to take away from the the picture but we just want kind of a light brown or a light gray color and you can use a script brush if you're doing this traditionally and then here I'm just using a, the the brush on size one here and I just want a real thin uh, jagged look to these little twiggy brushes like they're poking out of the snow there and that just kind of gives a more 
natural look to your painting. And so I just want to go ahead and sign it right quick in the corner there. And go ahead and call it done. And this was just kind of a, a little painting to see what what it compares how Rebel 4 compares to Art Rage 6 and Corel Painter and I've got to say that uh, they're very close I mean the Rebel 4 is very close to Art Rage 6 with these brushes and maybe I don't know maybe even a little bit better in some respects it, it does um act more like a natural media when it's running when you add more um water or paint thinner to the oil paints so in some respects it may be even more naturalistic um, than art rage six and um it's very close to some of the things that you can do in corel painter as well only it's a little bit simpler to do them in this program you can do you can make your paint look runny and things like that in Corel Painter 2021 but it is a little bit harder to kind of get that look you have to to work at it and adjust your brushes a little bit more but I would say that this program is really um, improved a lot and that it's very close to um, Art Rage and Corel Painter with these new brushes so and it's also a good price it's not very expensive um, I can't remember exactly I think I paid around 40 something for for it or for the upgrade anyway it's not a program that's very expensive so I would recommend getting it and trying it out because it's it's a very good program and it's getting better and better with every version that they put out. So this is the end of my little review of the new brushes that are in uh, Rebel 4. And stay tuned for a new video coming soon. If you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or any suggestions, just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later.